Hey everybody, happy Thursday. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on because I put out videos twice a week and you don't wanna miss them. But let's jump into today's question. Hey Katie, I've recently started therapy and I find it impossible to make eye contact with my therapist. Do you find it harder to connect with your clients if they don't make eye contact? Do you think it affects the recovery process? Thank you for taking time out of your week to make these videos, they're super helpful. You're very welcome, I'm glad you're finding them helpful. Now the first thing that I want to address is the fact that making eye contact in therapy can be difficult for a lot of different reasons. Number one, many of my clients on the autism spectrum find it really difficult to make eye contact in general. Second, if we're talking about a trauma or talking about something that's embarrassing, maybe something we haven't said to someone before, making eye contact while we talk about that thing is nearly impossible. And I say all of that just to let you know that it's normal and nothing's wrong with you. A lot of people struggle to make eye contact in therapy. Now the first portion of this question, she asks if it makes it harder for me to connect with my clients if they're unable to make eye contact. And the truth of it is, not really. And I say not really because if a client can't make eye contact when they're talking through a trauma or something difficult, that's okay and that's something that we'll work on. And I will encourage them, I've done this with many of my clients, I'll encourage them to move their eye contact a little bit closer to me slowly but surely. Sometimes I'll say, look at the table next to me, do you see that figurine there? And it's kind of done partially as a way to help them move closer to making eye contact, but it's also a way to keep them grounded, to make sure that they're with me while they're talking about the trauma or the abuse or anything that happened that may be making the eye contact difficult. However, if a client isn't able to make eye contact ever, it can be difficult in my practice in an outpatient basis. I do not specialize in autism spectrum, by the way, which I believe would be a little bit different and it's a whole different specialty. But in my practice, if a client was unable to make eye contact at all, it would be difficult for me to feel connected to them and to make sure that they're okay, that they're not dissociating, to know when things are hard or easy because if they're never making eye contact, it's really hard for me to read them. But that being said, I can play devil's advocate to myself and say, well, body language can tell me a lot as well, but eye contact is just a little extra that helps me better understand where they're coming from, listening to them, feeling connected with them, and like I, it gives me all the information so I can help them the best that I can. Does that make sense? I know it's kind of difficult, but think of talking to someone and them not making any eye contact with you. It can be really difficult to, you know, we sometimes try to make eye contact and like, hey, do you get that? Does, does that make sense? And I do a lot of check-ins with my clients when I'm giving homework to ensure that they hear me, that they understand and we're on the same page. And a lot of that is done through eye contact. Now to move into the second portion of the question, she asks if it can affect the recovery process. So a lack of eye contact, can it make recovery slower? And it kind of depends on the patient, but my short answer would be yes. And the reason for that is because eye contact is so grounding. Like I said, I use it with a lot of my clients as a grounding technique to make sure that they're present and they're with me. And it allows me to check in more quickly so that I don't, allow, I don't let them become dissociated for a really, really long time. And if we are dissociating, for many of you who've been watching a lot of my videos for years, you know that I've talked about how if we are dissociating, we're not able to process through the trauma because essentially we're not present. And so if I can't check in with my clients, then while we're working through the trauma or working on the recovery from whatever they're struggling with, I won't know if they're really with me. I won't know if they're actually processing through and hearing what I say and understanding. We could potentially work on different body language techniques for them to be able to express to me that they are listening and are present, but it just makes it a little more difficult and it can therefore slow down the whole recovery process. Overall, I hope that you hear that struggling to make eye contact is completely normal. It can make us feel really vulnerable. When we look someone in the eyes for a length of time, it can make us feel connected and that can be scary. It can also be scary to look someone in the eyes and tell them something embarrassing or shameful. So know that it's normal and it's okay. What I hope this video does is encourage you to at least try to make eye contact because it's something, it's, maybe it's like a muscle we, we have to work out and make it stronger. It's something we're gonna have to work on with our therapist. And the cool thing about therapy is that it's a great place to practice those relationship skills, things maybe we're not great at or we don't really know how to do, but we really wanna learn. And it's a safe place to do that. So if you find yourself struggling, Bring it up in therapy. Maybe write it down and just read from it if it's hard for you to say it out loud and look at them. If that's the struggle, maybe just reading. Keeping your eyes on the page could maybe make it feel a little more safe so you could get out what maybe is causing it, what your worries are, if it's always been a struggle for you. It's something we should communicate with our therapist because then and only then can our therapist give us tools and tips and tricks and ways to enable us to make eye contact and feel safe doing it. 
This video has been brought to you by the Kenyans on Patreon. If you would like to support the creation of these mental health videos, click the link in the description and check it out. As always though, leave in the comments, are there things that you've done with your therapist or in your own life to help you be more comfortable with eye contact? Or are there other reasons I missed as to why it's really hard for you? Let me know and I will see you next time. Bye.